What's up, friends? So you're saying to yourself, I would like to have a nice center console. One, professor, that allows me to fish, allows me to cruise, allows me to live the sandbar life. You want the bells, you want the whistles, but maybe you don't want to work with some of those many other brands because there's a lot in this market. Well, we're going to talk today about the Tidewater 232. We're here in Reedville, Virginia at Jets Marine. The great Bubba Wilkins is with us. He's given us his time to break down this boat. We're going to talk about who it's for, who it's not for, what we like about it. Professor's really good at like breaking down what he likes and doesn't like as the professional angler here. And we're even going to talk about, yes, that's right, price price because I know you want to know what it is that's why we do these videos and so let's see if this is the high-end center console for you So let's start with the brand itself. Tidewater, frankly, isn't one that I'm as familiar with. And so tell us about Tidewater, like where they're manufactured, why you carry Tidewater. Break it down for us a little bit, Bubba. All right, uh, Tidewater is uh, built in South Carolina, which a lot of- So many. <laughs> so many, yep, yep, so many down there. Um, the reason why I've got Tidewater, it is a, it's a great brand, uh, great reviews, but it has a lot of models to choose from. Uh -huh. So if you want an 18 footer, 23 footer, right on up to 38 foot. Wow. So, um, and this is um, the 23 too. This is the 232 Adventure. Yeah. Yes, Adventure. So the Adventure is a little bit more in a 50-50, it's about 51% fishing. Okay. Where they have an LXF and a side seating, which is 51% family. Got it. And so the Tidewater size ranges go from? 18 to 38. 18 to 38, which they is a just, really, really big range. Right. They had a 32 and they just announced a 38. Um, Everybody's trying to go big. Yeah. When you, <laughs> if you get on my Facebook page, you'll see where I just went down and took a test ride with one. Wow. Well, that's exciting. Now, your best seller though, and this is for the Virginia Chesapeake Bay area that people are using uh these these boats from you are buying from you they're thinking about that your best seller size wise is is a, is a 232. so that 23 foot range seems to be super popular for, the, it, for it this is. area it is um it, the bay chop is a very short chop so you're you're able to get uh get over two of them at that at that length um and and run pretty well uh, tide water is a company it's a it's, it's a lot of bells and whistles in it a lot of bang for your buck so you would compare this brand to it's uh it's competitors uh would be the, the mid-tier boats uh sea hunt uh key west Rabalo, uh, i guess one would... Rabalo. okay those, so sportsman Rabalo. okay so that gives you a sense for uh what you're uh what you're looking at now so and you've kind of answered this so if you said Somebody says to you, all right, uh, what's the perfect description of the Tidewater buyer? And of course, this is for the 232 Adventure. Right. Right line that, that you've discussed. You would describe that person as? Typical consumer that purchases a 232 is, is a, uh, a person that uh, wants to do some fishing, doesn't really like to fish a lot but they want to have the comforts of boating as well for cruising or just like you said going to the beach or uh just hanging out with friends um uh it's a lot of comfort yes um but along with comfort of course you know comfort costs money yeah, that's right. That's right. And we're going to get into that. So it sounds like you can live the sandbar life, you can. but you can also, live also your fish and dream. do your fishing dream. Is it possible for this size to go offshore? And I know that's always weather contingent, mm -hmm. but would you be comfortable with someone taking this, you know, out of a Virginia beach or out of a North Carolina to go offshore on yes. a good, on a calmer day? Yes. The, this brand, uh, especially on the 23, it's a bigger boat than most 23 foot boats. When you start looking at the competitors, when they say they have a 23-foot boat, if you look at the 
the beam in length it's under it's under 23 it's uh, right at about 86 um, this boat here has a uh, nine four beam and that's uh, a, it might not sound like a lot but you know that actually makes a big difference big those difference. 10 inches yeah. of beam do make a big difference don't they professor it, they do it is and the length and the length so now is that yeah. waterline beam or is that gunnel it's beam not, it's, it's gunnel beam so okay. good great question so a lot of boat companies they talk about their overall length and they measure from the bow pulpit right on back to the stern of the engine and uh and then they'll up up it so if it's 22 10 they'll call it a 23. Right. So this boat is actually 23 foot, two inches long. So the beam on it is nine four, but the waterline beam is eight six. Okay. So, and a lot of that is due to the flare that's in the front. And it carries it to the back. And it carries it right on here to the back. Right. Waterline beam gives you stability. Right. In terms of uh, uh, the total gallons, that this uh, fuel tank will hold is what? For those thinking about uh, offshore 102. 102, does it get any bigger than that? No. Doesn't get bigger than that. And so typically you're gonna run a 250 on the back of this? 250 is minimum, uh, most most people get the 300. All right. Because of it, it's a digital engine. Yes. Um, fly by wire, they can, they can add a tower if they wanna add a tower later on or observation deck. So and you... the ease of, ease of shift. All right, so if you put a 300 horsepower on this 23 foot tidewater, top speed looking 50? 52 miles an hour with the 300 with low weight. And so for in terms of fuel economy itself, at cruise, we're probably looking, what, two, two and a half? You're right, you're right. It's a V6 engine, so yeah. uh, 4.2 liter is what Yamaha's 250s and 300s are. Um, so it's a very... It, it, even though it's a lot of liters, it is a very economical motor. Right, so you can probably get, therefore, Professor, around 200 to 250 total miles out of a tank, which means would you feel comfortable at that point going out of Oregon mm. Inlet if you knew you had to go, let's say, 10 miles to the bridge, 40 miles, 30 to 40 miles out? So you're talking, you know, and then you're going to be cruising around throughout the day so you're probably going to come back with maybe a quarter of a tank or ish. How do you feel about that? Well, uh, probably not Virginia Beach at 70 miles. No, not at all. But it is one of those things you've got to get to know your boat. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's using it, getting to know it and trusting it. Me, myself, I have a problem going 40 miles out in the ocean with a single engine. But if you really know and trust your boat, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> know your boat, folks. Know yep. your boat. All right, so with that being said, let's get to know this boat. Let's get inside and take a look. All right, so let's look at the stern area here of the Tidewater 23. Tell us about what we're looking at here, Bubba. Well, you got your, your open cockpit. Uh, There's a seat here, so if you do want to uh, sit down, you can. it's a lift and lay seat. You pulls out and lays yep. down, so you can sit on it. You have your live well over here. Uh, pretty spacious live well. It is illuminated. Yep. And there you have your transom door to get in and out uh, when you're going to the docking, but it gives you that security of a full transom. Yeah, yeah. And um, just looking around, we've got a decent amount of rod holders as well. Cup you know, some cup, cup holders. holders. And I'm, I'm assuming you can add as many rod holders as you want into yes. the gunnel if you wanted to do that with some. You got, you got your rod racks on the side where you can stow your rods. Uh, it has the Comfort pads so it's not beating up your uh, your high dollar uh, reels against the boat. You know, one thing about this this area, Professor, that I see it, it doesn't feel like it's a lot of space in terms of just moving around back here. It's a little bit tight with with this center console seat. Yeah. Is, do you feel that or or? I do feel it, um, but we're talking about a 23 foot boat. We're yeah. trying to pack a lot of goods into yes. a small area. Yeah. So overall, it, it's it's pretty. A, it's a great setup because you can slide a cooler right underneath the, the leaning post there for all your drinks. And yep. there's a, a what's this box here in the floor? That, Is that for that's the access access to your bilge okay. area? And I'm sure there's some additional fish boxes around. It is in the in the bow. It has the yeah. uh, it has insulated fish boxes up there. Yeah. See, that's how my mind works as a captain because I want the boat to feel good and have a flow and not have to step over things. So that's a great place for a cooler and you also have fish storage. Well, to your point too, if things are going crazy, you're hooked up 
And that's one of the beauties of having a center console is the ability to move around that's without right. Obstruction. well, obstructions. Yeah. If you're hitting yourself on a cooler, right. it can be very, very frustrating. That's right. In fact, we got some videos of, <laughs> of me jumping over coolers to try to catch fish. Yeah. So that is nice to have. And dangerous. So you, you could fall over. That's right. Yeah. And we don't want that happening, Bubba. All right, so now that we've looked at the stern area, let's move to the center console because this center console area is really, really sleek. It's pretty packed up. All right, folks, and so just to be clear too, the boat isn't spotless because we've had it outside. We just brought it in here today so that we could do this video. So just keep that in mind as we're looking at you saying it's a little bit dirty. Of course, it's been outside. People have been walking on it, using it. So let's talk about some of the features here of the uh, center console area um, Im immediately. The soft goods, you can tell it has a different, it's a very high end feel, very comfortable feel on um, just overall it looks super sturdy, but tell us what we're seeing here, Bubba. Okay, uh, you have, <clears throat> start off with the electronics board here. Uh, you've got the Lexan in here, darker color, uh, blends in with whatever unit you decide to put into there. Uh, push button uh, switch in here that is illuminated to let you know when it's on. Um, phone charger and a cradle all at the same time. That's pretty neat. Nice. That is nice. Nice. And then of course, here's your, the heart of your motor. That's letting you know what it's doing. Fuel economy, uh, oil pressure, water temperature, trim tabs. The, these trim tabs are uh, illuminated trim tabs so you know where they are. Um, and you can take and knowing where they are is you know where that comfortable ride is. You know where the engine is tilted in there and you know what economy you can get and you can set it every time to that one spot. Uh, windless here, so if you're up front and you, uh, and I mean, you have somebody up front and you wanna put the wind, windless out, it's electrical here and it does add it in the bow as well. And then everybody's sandbar. Mm. Everybody's gotta have yeah. a jamming yeah. stereo. Yes. Plenty of speakers, plenty of speakers, all in the roof and the side. So there are a lot of speakers on this boat. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many total it has, but it yeah, seems not, like- it's Probably got... not good for Ron, it scares fish away. Yeah, it would, he would not be happy. <laughs> he would not be happy about that. And just the sturdiness of the way the console is built, the tower part, it, it, it is, you can tell it's not cheap. Right, so Tidewater builds their own top. So uh, you start to notice that they, it's integrated into the fiberglass part of it so that it takes and it, it looks like it's supposed to be there. Yes. Supposed to be there. Real big beams. Uh, this one is powder coated. Uh, all of them are powder coated, but this one is powder coated black to, to color coordinate with the hull sequence. Um, this console here is a glass and it has a opening here, electrical opening to give you your, uh, your wind when you need it uh, on yeah. those hot days. Yeah. Uh, you have your storage up here for your cell phone, what have you, or VHF radio, or you can take and custom mount one down here. Uh, cup holders that are illuminated. Uh, this, this has a, uh, a Lumatech POCO system on here, which you have an app on your phone and you can set the mood for whatever you're doing. Wow. So, Professor, when you look at this console, you're analyzing it for you as a captain, your general thoughts on it. I mean, it's super nice. I love, that was the first thing that caught my eye was that hot summer day when you're cruising along and you want the air in your face, yep. you can open that up. Um, it's built really well. It looks really nice. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of great components here. I love the way everything is not round stock in the top. You know what I mean? It just adds a little different character. It's that Good. curve appeal yeah. that it has it yeah. got that watery vibe or theme to it versus, you know, straight, everything straight lines. And I love the way the seats are rigged up where you can use it as a leaning post or a captain's chair. And there's there's perfect room for two there. And the, yeah, and you see the step yeah. for your co-pilot that yeah. you love so much. That's right. Yeah, that's a pretty uh that's a pretty slick feature. And the pad here, the helm pad. I mean, when you're driving these boats, your knees take a, you know, a lot of beating. Yeah. You'd be surprised what that little quarter or three eighths of an inch pad and extra does underneath your feet. I like it, it's set up well. Oh, that's slick. All right, good. Let's look inside the center console because that's always a question. How much space we got, what's in there? All right, Bubba, so with this center console, before we open it, what? are we gonna find in here? 
a big space. We got plenty of space for plenty of height, storage, plenty of depth, decent height. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, which is good area for someone that need to take care of business. All right, so all right, let's <laughs> let's just let's give it a little quick look here. Let's, Got to take care of business. You got to take care of that business. I noticed that the that the the door seems pretty sturdy and it doesn't just flop around, which is pretty important. You yes. don't want something that just flies around right. on there. So nice nice quality on that. They got it's got friction hinges on there. What that does, it keeps it from slamming. Mm -hmm. And anytime it slams like it, you always take a chance of the door breaking. So the industry has started with these uh, friction hinges work really well. So of course you got the drain here in your in, in your console and it looks like the way they've set it up to get to your electronics, this access door, right. you can just unscrew it pretty easy and four, just remove it. Four thumb screws, you can come back and look at every piece of electrical equipment that's in there. It's the back side of it, the side that's important. And that's simple because sometimes there's, I mean, access to these electronics can be okay. hard in the industry. Right. It's very frustrating. It shouldn't be that hard. It is because, uh, I mean, you can't, with electronics now, I mean, you, you got to be able to get to them and right and keep them watertight and safe. So you can put a little porta potty in there, and and you can still have storage room for other stuff. Yes. So they've done a pretty good job there. Anything else we need to know about that? Uh, just the, your battery storage is in there as well. It's not in the back in the uh, so it's in the salt wet. water area, right? Yeah. It's going to be in a dry, controlled conditions type area. Yeah. Cool. Trimmed out very well. All right. All right, so now we're in the bow area of the boat. Uh, Bubba, what'd they do here to make the bow just such a great social area? Well, you got uh, cushions that laid here. It's a filler cushion that goes where Ron is there. Nice sturdy decks in here. Uh, insulated boxes. So if you do have something that you want to uh, keep chilled, you can put it in there. Good thing about this is, is when you get to this boat here, you have your backrests up here. They're not in a way to keep you from walking around. Oh, so, that's a smart design. So when you when you have this cushioned up, you take and pull these out. They lock in the space. It gives you a good backrest. Yeah, opposed to some of the other models where you have to pull a pin and then you have the back that you have to store somewhere. Exactly. You got right. you got to figure out where you're going to put that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Now that just lays. Now right this up is just the a, another there. another bolster that you can lean yeah. against. Mm. I like it. Smart. Very comfortable. And then you've got this grab rail that goes very important a long ways that is quite important people don't realize it but mm -hmm. you know it's it's you, you you need things to hold on to yeah. right on the, the worst the worst ride in a boat is in the bow yeah 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 and people feel people that are not familiar with boats they just want to have their hand on something right. whether it's rough or not yeah. it makes why well, you got better. these handrails on you yeah. on your console as the boat is being maneuvered at top speed or whatever that you run on mid speed, you've got to be comfortable That's to right. have your sea legs as you walk around. Yeah. So we've got a, a windlass here all the way up in the bow. Looks like you've got your controls as well up there. Is that a standard? Yes, it is. Uh, the 232 uh, is, and, and from the 232 up, yep. uh, is standard with a uh, windlass with the Lumar uh, plow anchor, stainless plow anchor. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice anchor. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a nice setup. I mean, if you if you had to purchase that and put it in a boat through the hole like it comes through i mean you're looking at spending five or six thousand dollars easy yeah. easy yeah, yeah. Good really amenity to have more, really clean looking more jails up here you gotta speakers have them. everywhere you got you the speakers have yeah this is the party spot right here yes sir and once again there is a decent size just platform you could stand up here if yeah. you were you yeah. know, if you were not in the rough waters. Right, now take in mind with a boat like this, you have all these, co this combing and all of these soft goods. It's gonna take a lot more after your fishing trip to keep it clean. I mean, just imagine, you know, you're standing up here casting, catching bluefish and the way they splatter blood, oh, getting all down in here, you know, it's, it's a lot to take care of, but it's very nice and very plush. It is very nice, it is very plush, and uh, this has been, uh, a, you know, it's, it's nice to, to see all these features come together. And one other thing that you mentioned earlier, Ron, that we didn't say before when we were looking at the console tower, is you like the fact that because we could go offshore potentially with this, we have the outrigger option yeah. in place. The top is, is pre-manufactured, it has the cutouts for the outriggers, the yeah. fold-out outriggers. So. So your general sense of this boat, now that you've been on it, uh, Professor, you've owned a center console. It, for you, 
it was all about fishing. Yeah. Um, so what's your, what's your general impression? This is a great boat. If I were to just get into boating and had a big family that I wanted to be able to cover everything with and I wanted everybody to be super comfortable, yeah. this would be my choice. Yeah, this is, a, uh, this is certainly good for that. And of course, we promise you that we're gonna talk about the money component to this. And we, you know, it's one of those things where um, we're big advocates of, of trying to help you get a true sense for what you're gonna spend as we do these reviews. And we try to make our reviews more extensive, more honest, more transparent than anybody you're gonna find on the YouTubes. And so with that, Bubba, and again, we wanna thank Jets Marine for, for doing this for us. What's the general range? Because I know there's a lot of uh, features, oh, which by the way, I forgot to ask, is it possible for someone to get a sea keeper on this boat here if they wanted to? Uh, the manufacturer has not set up for that yet, but I'm sure it's in the works. Probably in the works, yeah. Def on a 23, yes, uh, on bigger ones. Definitely, yeah, yeah, Definitely. okay. So with that, with that being said, uh, what's a general range that you would expect someone to spend on the Tidewater 232? Depending on your horsepower, whether it be 250 or 300, depending on what electronics uh, that you decide in there, you're going to be anywhere from uh, 95 to 115. 95 to 115, which, you know, if, uh, and, and I could be wrong about this, but if I was uh, thinking about a, let's say, a, you know, a, a Rabalo, or um, we were looking at a um, Sea Hunt maybe as another comp, mm -hmm. you know, I could see those for something similar. They're probably 10 to $20,000 more, if I'm not mistaken, for their 23. Do you know, like roughly, or do you think they're gonna be almost the exact same across the board? Well, you gotta you got look at the competitors where we talked about waterline yep. uh, length and uh, overall length versus beam and everything. Most of the competitors that are win with, with this boat are 22 foot boats, but it advertised as 23. Mm -hmm. This is a true 23, which this boat here is gonna be somebody else's 24. Yep. So when you start to look at the 232 Tidewater, yep. you start to look at the uh, 24 Sea Hunt. Um, the Because uh, uh, I think that Sea Hunt goes, the 24 Sea Hunt, I think it goes for around 120, 125. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, by the time you put electronics on yeah. that you need and stuff, you're gonna, it's gonna, they're gonna be similarly priced when yeah. it comes to that. Um, this is one of the biggest 23s that's on the market. Yes, and I think that's one of the big takeaways here for me, Professor, is just this conversation about the beam and about that, that true size, because it can get pretty confusing, Yeah. especially when they, they, they play with the numbers they, a little bit. When they embellish the numbers a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Bubba, how familiar are you with the construction of this boat? Uh, I go to the plant every year. Uh, that's where the dealer meetings are. We go there, we do a plant tour every year just to see what they do. Now, Tidewater, they they uh, they welcome uh, potential buyers to come they, to their they plant. They do, they do. You need to set up, uh, you get with your dealer and you and you set up an appointment on a boat that, uh, and, and the factory rep will take you through about a two hour tour of the plant and then you get to see the guts of the boat. Yeah, and that's, that's uh, really important in my eyes because you're gonna be in some dangerous, potentially dangerous situations in this boat. And it's very important that you know the boat in and out. Yeah, yeah. And that, that like going offshore is potentially, whenever you yeah, trust potentially yeah, it, dangerous. It all can create dangerous situations. And the more you know about what you're in and familiarize yourself with it, the better off you are and the, the more capable you will be of handling an emergency situation. So I highly recommend, you know, whatever boat you're thinking about buying, you should go take a tour of the plant. If they were heavy, so yeah, I agree. Yeah. Learn, you learn a lot. The foundation of the boat is what you don't see. That's exactly right. That's yeah. a good quote. We're gonna go with that, folks. The foundation of the boat is what you don't see. Wise words from Bubba Wilkins. Again, we appreciate him. We appreciate uh, Jets Marine. Most of all, we appreciate you for being a part of the community here at Saltwater Fishing University. We've got lots of reviews that are going to be coming out in the year ahead we've had more and more manufacturers reach out to us and say hey we want you to come out to the plant and so who knows maybe we'll be out the tidewaters plant at some point in the future uh, because we want to show those stories of what they're doing behind the scenes what their vision is for the industry 
and it's great that Jets Marine has allowed us to do this. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, be a part of the community, and of course, check out our offshore videos as well. Uh, Professor and I, we've got a charter fishing company called uh, Speechless Sport Fishing, and we go out of Manio, North Carolina, Pirates Cove Marina, slip number 92, so you can find us out there all summer long. That's where Professor is basically gonna be living full time, and so it's exciting stuff. If you wanna do an offshore charter, Check us out, speechlesssportfishing.com. And until the next time, our friends, stay salty.